In this patch, all of these samples are triggered based on random chance according to a specific beat and beat subdivision. This creates interesting rhythmical patterns and grooves which you might explore to create well, more rhythmical patterns or your own melodies or any kind of noise-based constructs. Let's see how this is possible. Alright, now first I'm going to import some samples, some sounds into my patcher. I'm going to use a hi-hat sample, well, let's say a kick. I'm going to use all of these toms. I'm going to drag them together so that they are contained within one playlist object. And I'm going to do the same thing with my snare sounds. I'm doing it this way so that I have individual percussive channels, percussion channels for all of my samples so I can trigger these at different rhythms or alternate between different toms and snares for more variety, more interesting patterns. Okay, and this is very simple, right? It comes in a playlist object. The playlist object is going to send out the audio signal and to play this out, I can create a live.gain to kind of uh, change the volume in case it might be a bit too loud or a bit too soft. And then I can hook up these audio signals to the inlets of live.gain and the output I can send to easy deck. So the first two outlets of live.gain go to easy deck. And if this is on and if live gain uh, has, you know, is sending the audio signals loud enough, I can trigger these by either pressing this play button right here or sending it the message zero or uh, one for the first sample in my playlist object or two, three, four, and five for the other sound files contained in playlist. It's really simple, really easy to use. Uh, so we have that covered. But now here comes the fun part. How do we deal with generating the random rhythms? How do we do this? How do we you know, get beats and subdivisions of beats and actually make this a bit randomized in order to create rhythmical patterns? Now to do this, I'm going to use the tempo object. Right, and the tempo object is a not so distant cousin of the metro object. Metro, after giving it an argument uh, in milliseconds and when toggled on, is going to send out regular banks at that interval. So metro 1000, when toggled on, will send out a bang every second. And tempo functions in a similar way. Uh, first of all, when you give it an argument, instead of milliseconds, you have to type in the BPM, the beats per minute. And let's make it 60 so it comes down to the same thing. And we also have to turn on tempo. We have to toggle it on in a similar way. And the last difference is that tempo will send out integer numbers. It's going to send out numbers. It's going to count the beat and the subdivisions of the beat according to a 4-4 four, four bar, to a time signature of 4-4. Four, four. And by default, these subdivisions are going to be 16 notes. Uh, so a 4-4 four, four bar, 16 notes, means it's going to count 16 note values. It's going to count from 0 up to 15, then it's going to loop again for the next bar. And if we want, we can change these subdivisions. I can change the uh, beat division, but by default, this is one. And let's just keep it at one. But as a third argument, I can put in the rhythmical subdivisions. And by default, this is 16. But I like 30 second notes more. I don't know why. I just like them a bit more. I like them. Uh, I like it when it's fast and creates interesting rhythmical patterns. So I'm going to set it up like this. And as you will see now, this is counting much, much faster and it's counting all the way up to 31 before it loops back again to zero. And now I want to make it so we don't really consider the time signature. I don't really want to count these as a 4-4 four, four bar. I just want to get the value 0 to 7, you know, the, the subdivision of the beat in 30 second notes, and I want this to loop back again. And doing this is very simple, just a tiny bit of mathematical wizardry by using the modulo operator. And this is how modulo works. If I create the uh, modulo object or the operator and as an argument, I give it a number. Now the incoming values are going to be divided by this number and we are going to get the remainder. And if this sounds complicated or you don't exactly get what this means, that's okay. I don't either. But what I do know is that doing this will make the count start from zero and each time it reaches eight, instead of showing us eight, it is going to loop back to zero. So it's a very easy way of getting these cyclical 
uh, numerical values from a constantly increasing stream. And if we do this, if we put this through modulo 8, because our beat is divided into 8 subdivisions, uh, we are going to get these values, this count starting from 0, going up to 7, and then looping back again the subdivisions of the beat. And this we can use to generate rhythms. This we can use to trigger the samples we have loaded up in these playlist objects. Let's see, let's start with the kick. I'm going to put the kick here because, uh, you know, the kick is always uh, always cool and we usually expect the kick at the beginning of each beat. So I'm going to make it so when this value, this count is at zero, it triggers the kick. And to do this, I'm of course going to use the cell select or the cell object. And as an argument, I'm going to give it zero, which is going to make this object send out a bank from its first outlet each time the object receives the value zero. If it doesn't, nothing happens. But of course, I don't need a bank, so I'm going to create a message box with the value one in it. So this sends out, this bank sends out the message one to my kick, which should trigger the sample at the beginning of each beat. Okay, we are getting somewhere. Not very interesting, not very rhythmical, but it is a steady pulse. So, while keeping this, let's also do something similar for the hi-hats. Before we go into randomization, let's just hook these up with our subdivision count, with the subdivisions of our beats. And with the hi-hats, I want this uh, triggering to happen on every subdivision. I want each 30-second note to be represented as a hi-hat. So I don't really need to select anything. I can again create a message box one because I want to trigger the hi-hats. And I can just hook it up to my... Uh, my number object, because the message box doesn't care what kind of data goes in there. It can be a list or a number or a floating point number or a bang. As long as it receives something, it is going to send out the contents of the message to the object to which it is connected. So if I do this, I'm going to get hi-hats with 30 second notes. Okay, now let's continue with the toms. Now with the toms, and I'm going to make it a bit more quiet, with the toms I want to do something a bit more complicated. I want to make it so each time the toms are triggered, a random sample is played. So, you know, either the first one, the second one, the third or fourth or the fifth one. And to do this, I'm going to use a random object, right? Instead of using a message box with one in it, I'm going to use random and I'm going to give it the argument five. And this will make random when it receives a bank. It is going to send out a random value between zero and four. The five is not inclusive. But of course, I need values between one and five and not zero and four. So I'm just going to add one to the result. I'm going to put this plus one here. Okay, and now I just need to send out a bank to this random five, this random object. And now let's think about the rhythm. I want this not to be in 32nd notes, but I want this to be in 16th notes. And how can I do this? I can create another tempo object with uh, note divisions of 16 and try to sync that with my original tempo object, but I think that's too complicated. There is no, really no reason for doing something as complicated as that. So instead, I'm going to use the cell, the select object a bit more creatively. And instead of just selecting zero, like I did here, I'm going to select also two and four and six, not eight, because eight is also zero, it's going to loop back, remember, because of this modulo right here. And doing this is going to give me banks from each of these outlets for each of the 16 nodes because the 30 second subdivisions, the one and three and five and seven are going to be skipped. This is a really nice trick for getting individual subdivisions or picking out uh, you know, specific subdivisions from something as fast as 30 second nodes. So if I hook it up here and if I connect the first four outlets to random, I should get some random toms playing at the speed of 16th notes. Do notice that when I'm scrolling around the patch, it's lagging a bit, isn't it? It's kind of uh, stopping, it's a bit janky, and that is because we are using tempo. We are using Max's internal uh, timekeeping system, which will, of course, give priority to showing you everything and making sure everything works. So if the computer is being overwhelmed, 
the timing is going to be off. It might be a bit desync, it might uh, stop a bit, it might go a bit faster at some places. But if you have everything set up and if it's just playing, it will be at a normal rhythm. In a future video, we are going to fix this by going into uh, sample rate. We are going to trigger these by the means of sample rate. But for now, as long as everything is put, as long as we are not doing anything wacky with the patcher, all will be fine. And we have the toms and now I want to do something similar with the snares. But of course, instead of random five, I'm going to do random two plus one because I want random values between well one and two. And I'm also going to copy the cell, the select object, but I'm going to add uh, a bit more variety. Let's say I have my 16 notes here, but I also want to have the last four 30 second notes. So let's also put in five and seven. So zero, two, four, five, six, seven. One and three are skipped, but five and seven are present. So there is even more rhythmic variety in here. This is still not random, but it does provide us a, with a bit more variety that we are going to utilize just in a bit. So if I do this, we have a very rudimentary and incredibly simple drum machine. And in fact, this is where the fun begins. Now I'm going to add in some random systems uh, to trigger these rhythms in a generated manner. And my logic is simple. What I want to do is very simple. I want to put in a process so that when these numbers or you know these banks are passing through, before they are sent to these playlist objects, there is a kind of a check. There is, a, we generate a random number. We see if this random number is above or below the threshold. And depending on the result of that operation, only then we pass that message to our playlist object. And this will ensure that some rhythms are skipped, some rhythms are played, and this is what is going to create the, uh, the random generative rhythmical patterns and grooves. And to illustrate this, let's start with only the hi-hats. So I've deleted the other audio signal. So now we're only receiving whatever's coming out of the hi-hats. And again, you can see as I'm playing this around and I'm moving around the patches, it is a bit janky, but as I've said, that's okay while we are patching. But I will still stop the audio process as I do the very intense, deep, randomized algorithm patching. Okay, now let's see, what do I need? So I see that this one message is coming through here and it's exactly here that I want to in implement my algorithm. So let's delete this patching cable and let's see what is going to happen. So first of all, I need to have a system where I can or I may or may not send out this message to this playlist object and for this I can simply use gate. Without any arguments, gate is incredibly simple. The second inlet is going to receive the message that may or may not pass through. And the first inlet is a control, it's a gate, it's a control gate. So if I send zero to the first inlet, it's going to close the gate, meaning that this message will not be sent out of here. And one or any non-zero value will open this gate, meaning that this message will pass this check. So again, if I turn on the audio, if I create a trigger, I mean a toggle, sorry, and if I turn this on, now this message is passing through. If I turn it off, it has sent the message zero, so now we are receiving nothing. This message is not passing through. It is that simple. So then what I have to do is to have my final result be the value one or zero to decide if the gate is going to let this message in or not. So I'm going to use a trigger object because we have a very delicate order of operations here. So I can type in trigger or more simply T, and then I can type in which kind of messages I want to be triggered based on the input uh, from right to left. That's always very important. This, the trigger object and a lot of things in Max work from right to left. So uh, what do I want first? So first I want to send out a bank, which is going to do this calculation. And then I want to send the integer number that is coming into this trigger object. So I'm going to type I, so T I B, trigger integer bank. And since this is right to left, first this is going to send out the bank. And when that process chain has been completed, whatever is going to happen here, then this integer value is going to be sent to the gate. 
All right, now let's work with percentages. Uh, I always like working with percentages, so random 100, random values from 0 to 99, so this bank can trigger this random value, right? And you can see this happening right now. And this I can check against a threshold that I set myself. So let's say, for example, I want only 75% of the incoming values, the incoming uh, impulses to pass through. Then I can create the less than operator and then type in 75. So I'm checking if the incoming value is less than 75. If it is, if the answer is yes, then I get the value one. This is going to send out one. If it's not, if it's not less than 75, if it's higher than 75, then it's going to send out a zero, meaning no, this is not less than 75. And this is exactly what I need, right? If I connect the toggle here, you can see sometimes it turns off, sometimes it turns on, depending on the result. And this I can connect to my gate. And because I'm using the trigger object right here, first this bank is going to generate the random value, it's going to check it against our threshold, it's going to send it to the first inlet of gate, and only after that, the trigger is going to send out in the integer number we are sending out. So if I simply do this, we are getting random rhythms. Some of the beats are not passing through, and some of them are passing through. And if I want, I can further control this pattern, the, well, the random chances, by using the second inlet of the less than operator, I can create another number box, an integer number box. And I can say, for example, instead, let's have only 50% of the values pass through. Or even 20%. Or maybe nothing, or maybe all of them. You can set this yourself, you can dynamically change this yourself. So it's very intuitive to use since we are using percentages right here. Okay, now the easy part is to of course implement this into our other percussive channels, which is super easy, but to make it even easier, I'm going to choose my trigger, random, less than and gate objects. And I'm going to encapsulate this by going into edit and encapsulate, which is going to put this into a sub patcher by double clicking and keeping the P at the beginning, I can give this a name and let's call this a uh, prob gates. And to signify that this is incredibly important, let's also give this a new color by clicking on it, going to the inspector to the right, and then changing the border color to let's say red, or any color of your choosing, to be honest. So now the first inlet is a message that is going to pass through, and the second inlet is the probability of that message passing through, and the only outlet is that message if it passes through. Great, now what we can do is just to copy and paste the sub patch since uh, we have encapsulated it and do the same thing. So let's say after this plus one, we have our probability gates, right? And the same thing, the integer number, the same thing with the snare. It doesn't matter how many values are going in. The only thing that matters is that there's only one message that might be passed to the playlist object and uh, the existence of probability. And if I connect these again to live.gain and by proxy to easy deck, I should be able to hear the results, what we are all waiting for. And now I can dynamically change the probabilities of uh, these different rhythms or the uh, density of the rhythmical patterns appearing and disappearing. For example, let's say now I want less hi-hats, 45%, and I want way more tops, 75%, and I want a few snares in there, let's say 20%. Or let's say I just want to uh, have all possible snares, and I want to have a few toms, and I also want to have a lot of hi-hats, but not as much as the snares. During a performance or recording, you can really change these dynamically to explore different possibilities of grooves and rhythmical patterns. But of course, what's, what might be cool is to use your own samples. So it might be very easy to generate melodies if you use uh, samples based on notes, for example, a bunch of samples of piano keys or even just noise, completely noise-based constructs or you, know, you can use your own 
percussion samples, or you can just go crazy and try to add a visual aspect to it. Maybe these would also trigger something visual, uh, either uh, generative visuals or maybe different video clips, depending on which message is being sent. The point is, you have fun with it, you create something really cool with it, and you enjoy it as much as you can. Thank you for watching.